Hello everyone, I hope you are all doing great. Welcome back to my channel or if you are new here, hi, my name is Angelica and on this channel you will find those of new DIY projects every single week. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you don't want to miss any of my future videos. If you know me for longer, you know how much I like decorating my walls. If that's macrame paintings or prints, you will find a lot of them around my house. I also like trying new craft techniques and styles and for that reason today I'm coming to you with two new DIY wall art ideas. There will be something what I never done before and if you are not so much keen on realistic paintings, I'm sure this modern and abstract art will steal your heart. So without any further ado, let's get right into the first project. For my first project, I will be using plastic canvas. My is seven count, which means there is seven holes per line inch. It is the most common version for designs with thicker yarn. And to frame my new yarn art, I will use this thrifted wooden frame. It's in good shape and overall condition. It will only need some cleaning and sanding down. First, I have to fit this canvas to the frame. I simply mark the lines with Sharpie where I have to cut it. Scissors are strong enough to cut through the plastic and the squares also make it easy to cut it in straight line. I make sure it fits nicely. I take a piece of paper and start drawing my design. It helps me to visualize the final effect, know what the next step I have to take, like also I can plan what colors to use. The small lines show me the direction I'm going to sew the design for each part. I want the pattern to be only on the outside of the frame, so I have to mark how far the frame covers the plastic canvas. I'm going for Bray version this time and I will be using these colorful yarns. I start with the blue and make the first part of the picture. I put the yarn through the needle and make the knot at the end. I started with single thread as I thought it will be enough to cover the canvas. Make sure the knot at the end is big enough and won't go through the hole. I go through the first hole and pull the thread all the way. Then I'm going down and decide where I want this section to finish. Single thread wasn't enough so I've decided to go twice through each hole. Then I go to the hole next to the first one and again go twice through it. I basically create the same design on both sides on my canvas, but I have to decide where is front and where is back as all the knots I want to be at the back. I continue with this section making sure I stay straight with the holes and go twice through each one. When you run out of yarn, make bit knot at the back and cut the spare yarn off. Also make sure that the yarn is not twisted and the design is quite flat. With the last row on this part, I only pull the yarn once. The next part, I will start under this last blue row, so it will give me nice finish and there won't be any visible plastic parts. Probably better shown than said. So I'm moving slightly on the side the blue yarn and then pull the yellow one underneath. I couldn't decide if it's better to cut long pieces of cord at the time and just pull it for so long or cut them shorter and change for new one more often. I think it just depends on you and on what you prefer to do. 
Sometimes when it's too long, I get some tangles and I have to undo them, which obviously takes time. In here again, I want to achieve the best finish, so when two parts meeting each other, I try to almost blend them together by pulling two colors of yarn through the same hole. I continue with my design using different colors of yarn. The cream color yarn was much thicker than the rest I was using, so I only pulled it once through each hole. Practice makes perfect. After making almost the whole design, I've realized that I could just simply use double yarn and go only once through each hole. My mistake cost me twice the time I should spend on this project. But you will know that uh, if you are using 7 count plastic canvas with thin yarn, simply double it and then start making your design. It was so much easier and quicker this way. I only have to make sure each time that the yarn is not twisted. After I finished working on my art, I moved to the frame. At first I was thinking on painting in in different colors, so I just wanted to slightly sand it down. Then I realized that I actually like the natural color of this wood, so using sander I sanded it all down, only leaving the gold accent. I think the modern abstract yarn art will go nicely with this more traditional and vintage looking frame. I've moved the canvas into the frame, closed it and my new wall decor is ready. My next wall art I start again with drawing its design on piece of paper. To create this project I was inspired by these photos from Pinterest. It's very modern and minimalistic piece of art with softer and curved edges which are very popular in this year. Each part I color in different shades to give me the idea which parts are higher than the rest. For my canvas, I'm going to reuse this thrifted piece. It's in good shape and condition, just the art on it, it's not in my style. To create the shapes, I will be using cardboard. I'm going with the double one as it's thicker and stronger. Looking at my design, the white parts are the same level as the canvas. Then I have parts which are higher and the black ones are the sticking out the most. Looking at my design, I start cutting out the wanted shapes. To cut it, I started with scissors. They were sharp enough to do it, but they were kind of flattening the cardboard, so I've used the knife instead. And the first part is ready. Ideally, you can try cutting bigger and more complex pieces at the time. It will make the whole construction stronger and more resistant to cracks. But I know sometimes it's quite hard to imagine and copy onto the cardboard, so do it whichever way is easy for you. It will be all covered, so don't worry too much about the gaps between the pieces.
Now the whole design is ready and looks pretty good. You can see how I've layered each section. To glue all pieces to the canvas, like also to each other, I'm using Gorilla Glue. I'm going with this one as it's very strong. Uh, it takes a while to cure, but I need something that will hold all the weight later on. I don't put too much of it on the edges, as it expands and I don't want any mess outside the edges of my cardboard. And to cover it all up, I will be using all-purpose filler and the metal palette knives. At first I was going to use plaster, but then I've read that it's not recommended to use plaster on color board as the paper will suck in all the water and the plaster will crack. This fillet doesn't contain so much water and its consistency is almost rubbery. I start with filling and covering the edges of cardboard piece. I push the filler slightly into the gaps and then smooth it. I'm not gonna lie, it's quite time consuming project and to make it smooth you really need to be patient. But I enjoy the process. I'm going with one piece at a time, leaving the canvas surface untouched. Once you smooth it with the knife, you can also brush it slightly with damp brush. Don't make it too wet, as it will ruin the cardboard. Once it's all covered, I leave it till fully dry. In my case, it took about 24 hours. When it's hard, you can go with fine sanding block and smooth out some parts before painting. I will be using paint mixed with baking soda, so I don't worry too much about any imperfections. And as I've mentioned before, I'm adding a couple of teaspoons of baking soda to my paint. I'm going with green color, which is also very popular this year. Adding few pieces of trendy decor to your home refresh its look and by making them by yourself you also save loads of money. As you can see one coat of this paint covers everything perfectly even the printed canvas. I've also created this modern looking frame for my new art. If you're interested how to make it, check out my other video where I explain step by step how to do it. Link in the description down below. Let me know in the comment section which idea was your favorite and if you are going to recreate any of them make sure to tag me on Instagram, I would love to see your projects. And if you enjoyed this video make sure to give it a thumb up, it helps me to reach more like-minded people and prove that you can make your home look pretty on a low budget. And for now thank you so much for watching, your support and I will see you in my next video.